Right, guys, uh, it's Anthony Cummins here. So uh, basically, uh, what I'm going to do is just go through um, some Natoru stuff. Uh, let me just open the door because I think I've um, shut off my internet. I live in a very, very old cottage. So uh, I live in an old cottage. So basically, uh, the internet doesn't get through all the thick walls. You can see the thickness of the walls there. So it is now the 8th of May. And uh, it is, Natori Day is on the um, the 5th of May, basically. And we'll discuss that more in a bit. Uh, I've opened this up a little bit early, 10 minutes early, because I was here sat here waiting. And why not? So let's have a chat. Could somebody, whoever's watching there, put in the post, can you just put, can you see me all right? Is everything okay? Uh, have you got any questions to start us off? Oh, Christopher Flynn. Let's see how things go. Nice one, Christopher. Right. Um, excellent. Um, so basically, people are starting to arrive now because I've gone up a bit early. So the reason, so what I'm going to do today is only answer. I'm only going to be here for about an hour, an hour and a half because last time it turned into like about a two and a half hour job and I was, I was dying by the end of it. So, uh, but it's good to see we've got Christopher there. I'm not sure else he's coming in. Um, but basically, we're going to go through any questions you've got about Natoriu. So, but I, what I can't do this time, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, Chris. What I can't do this time is keep up with every single question. So, what I'm going to do is ask a question. Uh, I'll look at a question, and then when you, when I've finished answering and rambling on about that, put your question back in. So, if I've missed it, I'm sorry. It was just it was too complicated last time to go up and down the old screen. So. Um, Start thinking of a question you want to ask about Natoriu, and I will kick off from there. But basically, there are three ways you can look at dates in the old ways. And that is, you can either look at it exactly how the Japanese would have looked at it in the Edo period, which is, or Sengoku Jidai, where they would say, okay, it's the third day, 15th day of the third month, which is actually the day Natori died. He died on the um, 15th day of the third month in 1708. Um, which happened to be May the 5th in that year. But it's different every single year. So no matter what, you know, no matter when it is, it's different each year because it's based on the Chinese calendar. Um, no, I've not done any of that, Chris. No, I don't do I've, I say this every time. I do not do donations until um, Christmas. Christmas is my donation time. I don't do um, anything Patreon. I don't do any money collecting. I don't do any setup for donations, nothing. It's at Christmas. Once a year, I ask for it. Beyond that, no, I just just see people. I have no idea what super chat is. That sounds super complicated. Um, but let me know because I don't know what super chat is. Um, right. So basically, there are three ways of looking at it, and that's one of them. So by changing the date every year, to, but then everybody get a bit confused. The Japanese now have mixed traditions, which is bizarre. They've mixed uh, the old ways and western modern way so they say the 15th day of the third month is actually march the 15th and you're like well yeah it is but it's not the right it was may the 5th back in 1708 not march the 15th and now they just say every every march the 15th is the 15th day of the third month so um which i don't really want to do that's not correct so we actually i have done it another way which is to celebrate it on its actual anniversary, which is the 5th of May, uh, which I did a lot on the 5th of May. So uh, if you were on the hub, you'll have seen all that. I wasn't going to bring a drink with me today because it was a bit thingy. Anyone got any natural questions, let me know. Um, but let me have a drink. And I've bought a rack of these. These are um, sparkling water. So I always make me burp, to be honest, because they're drinking, talking, drinking, talking. So I've got a few of the texts with me. Um... But basically, we've got Isu Sensei's death tablet, which is um, not an exact replica. It's just based off his death tablet in the actual temple. The one in the temple is about yay big. Uh, and it's got his death name there and his actual name there and information. So that is the date of his death. So you can see third month, um, 15th day. Um, it's on YouTube. It's a setting that allows people to post questions to you based on the donation that they make the questions will pop up on your screens ah i see right yeah um nah, it's about money that chris i'm not a big fan of i don't really like hunting for money it's not either the gods will give me money when they want me to have money do you know what i mean i'm actually a believer money comes when it comes um but i don't believe in um sort of you know trying to get money all the time it's just 
I don't mean money is base. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not all samurai or you shouldn't touch money. I'm not trying to be like that, but sometimes it just gets in the way of the research. It's like once a year, I would like to get some money off people. And I got a lovely little donation this time, last time, which was wonderful. It was really nice to get. So it and it helps all the time. Like literally bought that new ninja scroll, and pretty much the donations covered that. They pretty much covered that. So now I am doing it on this channel, my Natori channel, which is much, much smaller. It doesn't get anywhere near the traction of um, my Samurai and History one. But I thought if I did it on the Samurai and History one, it would literally get, you know, hijacked like it did last time. What I do need, Christopher, which you could do if you want, is I need someone to be the monitor on the, my next chat so they can say, oh, right, well, let that come, let that one go through, let this one go through, let that one go through. So if you want to do that, Chris, you're more than welcome. I tried to get John Hater to do it, but he doesn't want to do anything, anything at all. Right. So there's a few of us there, not loads, but there's a few of us. But before I start rambling on, has anyone got a Natori question? And I will go get my Shoninki. Um... One thing that people don't use, or I found they don't use, is the free stuff I put together. I put a lot of free stuff together, and I know they don't really use it. So here's the free Natori um, Shoninki downloaded. Literally every skill in the Shoninki, excuse me, every skill in the Shoninki put together for people to just use as they want and uh, it's free to download it's the entire shonen kit obviously it's not the full text but it's the entire point of every shonen kit okay right where are we at chris um yeah the, do you start on the latest translation you've got uh yeah I've, they, they, yeah totally so i annoyingly i've got you can't really have three authors on one book so we've got miyako working on two scrolls and Yoshi working on two scrolls, and it's whichever one finishes first. So what's actually going to happen with the next lot of Book of Samurai, which the publisher wants now? They're like, yep, yeah, excellent, Book of Samurai is doing well. It's like a steady seller. Here we go. The bloody sparkling water started. So they say it's a steady seller. We're happy with it. So what's going to happen is Book four, uh, book 3 and Book 4 are going to be roughly coming out like one year within each other, or two years within. You know what I mean? They're going to go racing up together. So... We're working on, Miyako is working on Suisen and Kundo. So Suisen means water tactics, Kundo means way of the Lord. And Yoshi is working on Gunshu. We've um, done the first lot of Gunshu, it's pretty much done. Uh, but now we're working through it and then she's going to work, we'll pick the next scroll to go with it. So yeah. Um, hello, George. Nice to see you again, mate. Nice to see you. Uh, there we go. Someone in the chat. Welcome, man. Yep. Uh, Okie dokie. Oh, Christopher, it's, it's really... They really, oh, I've frozen on the screen. I don't know if you can still hear me or not, guys. I'll wait for it to, hold on. Uh, can you still hear me, guys? I've all frozen at this end. I don't know whether you can hear me. Not sure. Anything? Okay, right, sorry. Oh, John Hate has arrived, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. Okay, basically everything froze on my computer then. Just went, like, you know. So, um... Oh, Christopher, it's so good. The Suisen stuff is... Uh, oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, we're a bit of a delay, I'd say. We've got about a 20-second delay. So, basically, the Suisen stuff is excellent. It's, like, as you would expect, lots of information about naval craft and a really, really, really deep secret about the Shinobi Nawa, the ninja robe, which I'm not going to release until... It, it's, like... It's interesting, let's put it that way, for the Shinobi Nawa. Uh, but basically, it's all the parts of the ships, how to build, not how to build it, but, you know, how they are constructed and what, and all the parts and the esoteric sections. And the first bit actually gets a bit technical. It's this ship does that, this ship there. And then it starts talking about the formations, like X formation, um, sort of O formation, um, interceptor ships. It's just like, this is amazing. This is so good. So, Christopher, it's so good. Then, Kundo, you're all the way of the Lord. Miyako is basically, it's not really enough that I can piece it together. She's basically working on there. Um, and then um, Yoshi is going through. Oh, sorry. Back to Suisen. The second part, of because it's in two parts, is all about river crossing and how to get your bow waterproof, shooting from in the water, how to how to move through water, um, shinobi in water, how to be, you know, stealthy through water. I really like it. Um, and then Yoshi is working on Gunshu Yoho, which actually 
is um, it's a military teaching scroll, basically, or important points on military teachings, which has got some of the stuff we've already done. And in fairness, it goes back over like the five types of spy and all this and blah, blah, blah. And um, so so uh, I'll come to that in a minute, Christopher. So, yeah, it goes over the five types. It's similar stuff we've already done, but then it just hits me new stuff like the 15 ways of um, night attack and all the different ways of sort of fire attacking hand, the five ways of incineration, the 10 problems with this guy. And you're just like, yep. So it's one of those where I've said this before, and it was Yoshie who said it, and she said it perfectly. Is She said, Natoriu isn't linear. It's a singular point in the middle. It's like everybody is in a circle looking inwards. And it's got you've got the Taisho commander there. You've got the Suisen guy here. You've got the Shinobi guy there. And you've got all the different people in the in the samurai army looking in and that is Natoru. They're all chatting with each other and that's the scrolls. We see them in a linear form, but actually she says, so you do get repeats in different things. Like for example, Shoninki goes back into the five types of spy, but technically the Shoninki is the last thing. And the five types of spy have already been in it like three times in different scrolls. But the point is you're going back over things, you're discussing things, you're moving, extra bits are added. It's not the way I like it. Personally, I prefer everything to be all in one place, but but that's a very old way of doing things, very old style Japanese stuff. So, yes, I cannot wait for those. And I definitely think Natoru is going to be probably 10 books long. I can't imagine it being any. And each book is about 100,000 words. So roughly. So if it's 10 books long, it's a million words, roughly, or maybe 800,000 because some will be lower because there's more pictures in the other ones of words on samurai military warfare. People do not understand how big Natoru is. I've seen all these schools, I've done it all, and as much as I love some of these Koryu and they're excellent, they, they just lost so much or they were such a small part. So they actually, Natoru is massive and you're like, bloody hellfire, it's massive. Um, because it shows it all ties in. Yeah, exactly, Christopher, exactly. Basically, it all ties in together. So, yes, it does go back over the five types of spy, but it starts adding new things to it. So, for example, the Doom Spy has different variations and a new word for it that I've never come across before. And it says if you, and different ways. So, for example, if you burn a camp down, but you've used a certain type of spy, it's got a different name for it because, you know, Isui Sensei was very big on the sort of, um, Ikusa, excuse me, uh, Kotoba, Ikusa Kotoba, which means bellicose language, which means, um, vi violent language, war language, war with different stuff. So you don't want to be using the wrong type of vocabulary. So he says, if you've burnt the enemy down by using this type of tactic, then you use this name to talk about that spy you don't you just say a doom spy because that's wrong and he's quite up on that sort of stuff which uh, is complicated for me because not only is it in a different language it's even in japanese people who are japanese get it wrong so the 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 scrolls are saying actually you want to use this word because you're getting it wrong and they are medieval japanese so it's three things removed medi uh, the expert military tactician said you should say a specific way it's then in medieval japanese and it's in Japanese, which we don't understand. You know, most of us don't understand. So then it's got to go to English. So you've got to sort of get through all those gates, if you like. Uh, yeah, a million words. Actually, I don't know what the actual vocab count would be. It'd be in the probably about, I don't know, probably about, because you've got all the Japanese words, so probably about 10,000. I think they have, well, the average vocabulary for normal conversation is only about a thousand words then about two thousand words for newspapers as they say because you've got different vocab coming in and then um after a normal person can understand i think six to seven thousand words vocabulary of not like i always use stethoscope as the actual example because everybody's like knows what a stethoscope is but when do you ever use that word you know what i mean um so you know penicillin when do you use that but you know what it means and of course, we're now talking through so with Japanese, so what a million words overall is mental. Um, yeah, I know. Let's you know, let's make it productive, guys. We've got a few people on, so ask away. I don't mind, just ask away. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, John. So, John Haters here, who should be bloody doing my um, yeah, I want him to do my what's it called monitor on the other one but he's useless sometimes our oh, john he's a brilliant lad he's dead nice he comes to my house all the time he'll drive two hours to have a cup of tea and everything he's dead i'm trying to get him to do my bloody mon moderating he's a killer so um i might have to ask that christopher to do it won't i so but yes i agree basically 
this in in the old way of talking samurai they are saying you should talk in a specific way so for example every set everybody says makabishi yeah makibishi sorry makibishi which is um the cow chops if i remember rightly um and actually it might be hishi and everybody says no 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 anthony you drop the h and you put a b in there for bishi uh, and you're like you drop a h and you put b in and that's correct in modern japanese but actually the marks are not there on some of the older scrolls and then the Jap modern japanese say well that's because they just forgot to put the little the little 10 10 marks like which change it from ha to ba basically and it's like you change going that way and actually i don't think they did uh, we know that through samurai war stories it clearly says don't drop so for example ka becomes ga kani is crab and gani is what lower class people say so gani have you got any gani uh, and the samurai's like yeah one need some corn he doesn't want you know what i mean it'd be like imagine a really posh british person versus a really not northern you know picking his nose lab so actually us saying bishi makibishi could actually be incorrect and it's actually hishi because the samurai does not drop for the next one but there are some cases where they do so uh it's really complicated and i'm going to do an analysis of all those texts that i can come across and the little 10 10 marks i forgot what they're called in japanese if anybody remembers them and basically and, and analyze them um and see how many do right sorry ah uh, yeah so um right bacon burger oh that's i would love a bacon burger right now if we've got any natori students in the house let me know um hold on Con oh konnichiwa right okay right hello ninja style um i haven't got my glasses on but my um hiragana is not that fast either oh okay yeah perfect we swept over to katakana there right okay are you going to do any shinobi gadget demonstrations in the future would we'll season the problem with shinobi gadgets is they're not that exciting everybody says can you show some shinobi stuff? it's just not that exciting it's really not it's like drills and saws and oils and grappling hooks. Now, I'm 42. Can I still use a grappling hook and get over walls? I can barely do it at 15. But actually, that's a mistake. This idea that they grapple up and you're like going up massive amounts, it's not actually that much. And I think they struggled with it as well because you actually put a lot, like, for example, take Akutagawa Ryu Ninjutsu. You put um, a dagger in the wall or a, a drill or whatever, and you stand on it, but you throw your grappling hook over, which is only a couple of meter rope, and you're pulling yourself up till you can get on the lip. So it's not like it's like, because they're only thin little ropes, and you can do that on a thick rope, but climbing a thin little rope, so you've got a foot, you put your katana on. So in Natori, what most people have totally missed is um, the use of the um, grappling hook instead of the sagio cord so it clearly says use a grappling hook in unison with your katana on your sagio cord so or oh, to attach it so you've got to imagine that you could put your sagio cord on your foot now we know from the kuden which is actually in a different scroll which is not published yet that it goes through the um through the tsuba so that the sword comes straight up and not like that and that's what and then you're also using a grappling hook and i think that's in the end of i can't remember which scroll and you're pulling yourself up so it isn't like it's like chink even like these, um, no, I was going to say nippy little Japanese, that's a bit racist, isn't it? These nippy little Japanese guys are like, um, nippy being an English word for quick, by the way, before everybody calls a racism card. Um, then basically, even they, I think, needed step ups to get over it. And the walls are called Yojimbe, which are bodyguard walls. You know, we all know Yojimbo. Yojimbe is a bodyguard wall. Remember, these Japanese terms are from memory, guys. So I'm getting wrong. Please let me know. And uh, they're using the grappling hooks like that. So ninja tools are not that exciting, to be fair. A bit of fire here and there and a bit of like thinking. But actually, it's a bit disappointing when you watch it. You're like, you know, it, what makes ninja stuff cool is because you're going to die if you get it wrong. It's not like, oh, sorry, mate, I got it wrong. You're like, just going to be collared and then get your head chopped off. You know, and it's like, that's what makes it exciting. Right, before um, I lose everybody. Uh, okay. Right. Konnichiwa. Master I. Okay, right, okay. Uh, some. Some. Okay, um, Ian, nice, isn't it? Nice live session. Ian, don't forget, I do about once a month now. I do my live ones on my big channel. I say big, it's not that big. 
But you know what I mean. Uh, what's your hopes for the future of Natoru? Where do you want to see this going long term? I want to see Natoru. I originally made because basically it was obvious that every school was missing something. And it's not that their school was wrong or it was bad. It was just that it's been left or dropped behind. Let's take Shinkagi Ryu, for example. How many people do Shinkagi Ryu? But how many? And it's based on um, Kamizumi's work. How many people have actually owned a copy of Kamizumi's Gunpo manual? I do. You know, and I don't do Shinkagi Ryu. How many people in Shinkagi Ryu actually perform uh, Kamizumi's Gunpo? And even that's one of the earliest traditions we know of the Henbai step, which is the Emperor's step, which is mentioned in the Ban Senchukai. And he mentions it about 80 years before him, I think. So you're like, the magical steps that follow Hagun. John Hater will tell you all about this. The magical Chinese steps that follow Hagun. How many people in Shinkagi Ryu do that? No one. So my point with Natori Ryu was like, I wanted everybody to take it on board and underneath. So people who are doing Shinkagi Ryu, I want them to do Natori Ryu. It's one of the biggest mistakes everybody makes to say you can only train in one school and it's it's not, you can't train in any other school. That's absolute nonsense. Maybe towards the end of the Edo period, I'm not sure, but actually you could clearly train in different schools. You're not meant to train in two sword schools, but you are meant to train in one gunpo school, one sword school, one and what and one spear school. Or if a one school does spear and sword and jujitsu, then you get gunpo for somewhere else. So you are meant to do different schools, or if possible, do it all in one school. But a lot of this stuff's finished now, it's gone, or it's been missing, or they didn't have it. So what I would like to see, Christopher, is everybody in Koryu giving Natoriu a go. You don't necessarily have to be a full-blown student. I'm not saying, like, I want to eat everybody. It would be amazing. But everybody in Koryu should actually be studying Natoriu underneath because it's the only gun part there in the English language. So, and it's going to be a complete school one day. And I'm going to get, hold on, just before, uh, glad, luckily this isn't going up too fast, which is easy because I can wrap it on like an idiot and then um, come back to when it's not gone off. So the other thing, Christopher, is I really, obviously I'm talking to everyone, but Christopher, I really, really want um, to find the tanky Yoho scroll. The tanky Yoho scroll uh, is what I would love to get. And if it's real, and, and and we can discuss that if you want to know, I'm saying if it's real, if it's not real, we can discuss that. But basically, we believe there is a tanky Yoho scroll, and it is the unarmed combat of Natoru Ryu. And there's a couple of things that have led us to this, and we can't confirm it in a minute, but absolutely want to find that. And I, me and Andrew Throburn will bring it back from the dead, study it, and make it into a living martial art for today. And my only hope is it's brutal. I would love to see it as properly brutal. Um, but that's my true hope for Natorium. Do not lower your physical abilities for sure. Are you very fit unless you are a real ninja and blood your skills? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I am fit enough, to be fair. I'm quite fit. I used to, I, my dogs are gone at the minute. I share the dogs with my sister, but I normally walk about six miles a day. I used to swim three or four times a week, but all things are shut down now, aren't they? So, uh, no, two or three times a week, but all things are shut down. Um, I'm pretty strong as a lad. I chop my own wood. So I'm fitter than most people my age, but I don't know if I could climb a wall with a thin little rope. At my, You know, because I'm a stocky lad, actually. And uh, so I'm not like five... I'm not like five foot or about six stone like the Japanese were. Um, so that's, you know... Uh, okay... Okay, right, guys, you have to give me context on what you're saying. So I've just got one off Bacon Burger, and he said, ha-ha, thanks, Anthony. I'd, that'd be super exciting to see. But everybody does this. They think I remember from before what we were talking about, and I don't. So make sure you put the context in. So Anthony, R-E, this, or does anybody know what the Latin R-E means, actually? R, uh, um, semicolon, or colon, E. I'm sure John will know. John knows these things. Or somebody Google it. Um, which book again for Shinkage Ryu? Uh, yeah, exactly, George. Exactly. It's in Japanese. So, Shinkagi Ryu, all over the world. Kamizumi is the guy who created Shinkagi Kagi Ryu. You learn Kagi Ryu, he did Shinkagi Ryu, and then you get Marume, Marume Kurando. I always, that name is it always gets me. And um, Yagyu. Uh, which Yagyu was it? I can't remember exactly. Munenori, Munetoshi, I can't remember. Um, but basically, those two come off him. And because Shinkagi is not my school. And from there, 
they do the sword schools and other people. So Kami Izumi is Gumpo. He's published in Japanese, and I'm not going to translate and publish it with Yoshi. We've got way too much to do. But for as many people talk Shinkaguru, Shinkaguru, no one has ever done it. Why not? Why not? And it's there to be done. So I think they should. I think Eric Shahan should be all over that, to be honest. See, it's really. Um, or Sean Askew. Why don't Sean do that? It would be amazing. So, you know, get some like stuff out there so people can get it. I wish I, I wish we had enough translators to do it. It would be amazing. Um, okay. Are you there, Natoru? Yes, I am. <laughs> right. Equivalent medium of manuscript from other cultures. I'm interested in curating a list of fundamental military skill sets. Okay, you're going to have to give me some context on the question now, some, some sort of direction, what you mean. So what, what exactly is the question? Are ninja gadgets? Oh, right, okay, right. Yeah, sorry. Yes, thank you very much, Baconberg. <laughs> Um, I know George is a student. I know um, of mine. I know John is. Uh, have we got any more people out there? I'm not sure. Right. There are so many fake shinobi around the world thinking wearing black makes you ninja. They also wear tabby. It's funny, eh, actually. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to leave this nameless. But the other day, uh, there was an amazing piece of shinobi no jutsu used in, the wor in, in my world. And it was... Uh, straight out the shonen kit and it's a friend of mine i'm not going to mention who they are they they're involved in koryu and um they wanted to know the financial ability of the of an enemy of theirs. enemy is the wrong word but let's use you know military terms an enemy of theirs they want to know the financial ability so they followed up on a clue on facebook and then asked the price that they knew so they knew this one person had paid something and they knew that that person had considered it outside of their budget or at the edge of their budget so they went and asked the same for the same price to be done the same amount of work to be done and this gave them the amount that their enemy could physically spend I said they're not actual enemies but they they could physically spend and then they calculated what or how whether they could go into a war of attrition over something I was like brilliant I'm not going to tell you it is but brilliant that is ninjutsu so when people uh when people say oh you know they say black people dressing in black and everything you're like no guys no that's not ninjutsu i've used ninjutsu so many times but you use it in a subtle way which is in in the 10 ways of natoru ninjutsu you use void ninjutsu basically the, the the kanji the buddhist kanji not mu there's a kanji if anybody's good at kanji put mu and void in so uh, mu and kara and um the same kanji as sorrow for sky and basically, the difference between those two kanji is really, really interesting because Mu is without absence and Sky is like void, like, you know, the, the air that's there. And uh, void ninjutsu. So not Mu ninjutsu without ninjutsu. It's void ninjutsu, which is like ether, the ether, if you like, unseen, but still there. So the use of the highest, deepest skill of ninjutsu is to not know you're using it or not know it's being used on you. And, and what's funny is a lot of these ninja skills are going around and, and some of my Koryu friends are using it clearly. And you're like, oh, it's so embarrassing that these guys have got like black suits on and throwing shuriken. And they say, oh, you guys don't know anything about ninjutsu. And in the background, all this stuff's going on about checking whether they can afford the same amount. And they're using shoninki techniques and void ninjutsu is there. And you're like, oh my God, this is like a Monty Python comedy. You know, these people are online giving it boom, boom, boom. And you're just cringing with laughter. Right. Um, George is here. He's number 20. If you see hashtag number, it's the number of Natoru. So basically, if you get a number in Natoru, uh, it costs you £12. It's about $15 and it's for life. And £5 goes to, so £1 goes to Andrew Throburn because he has to do all the typing up. He gets your name, types it, sends you the stuff and everything. £1 goes to Miyako because she automatically writes out your katakana. So you have your katakana whenever you want it in Japanese, your name. Five pound goes to the monk for donations so they can just do their stuff and five pound comes to me and that's it That's a one-off charge for life in that you and you get a number So George is one of the earliest guys who came in on it and for that I send out um, something called the drop now the drop um, Is to do 
with this word here, this name here. This is Isu Sensei's death name. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd never remember how to pronounce it, and I should really learn how to pronounce it. Uh, but it means like the man who got, who dives to the bottom of water, like a drip of water going to the bottom and studies. This is the kanji for study. So my school is called Kugakukan, and it's based off this kanji. So because I'm the first one in Nato Ryu, and I'm the, you know, in the new Nato Ryu, the one I, I've brought it back, the monk made the name of my school the first kanji from his death name. And if I should have put the banner up, I'm sorry, guys, I should have put the banner up, but it's all locked away. Um, then it's Kyugaku Kan, which means the house of deep study. And this idea that Isu Sensei, like a drop of water going on rocks, studies till he gets to the bottom. And I am following in those footsteps of Isu Sensei, and I am going to go to the bottom of all of this. So I send out a newsletter called The Drop, and it means one drop of water. So now George, he's got that number for life, number 20. We put it on our tops. We're up to about 250, I think. Not everybody follows on to be a fair. We've got about 250 people interested, but not everybody follows on to be full-on students. Like George has been with me for a long time. And um, obviously John Hate has been with me for ages. I think John Hate, if he's still there, I don't know where John is. I think he's number 39, if I remember rightly. I might have got that wrong. Uh, but basically... He should have been there at the very beginning, but he's bloody lazy and didn't do it. So um, he should have been in the top 10. So that's what we do with Nato Ryu. Okay, in Special Forces, it's all about mastering the basics and having the abilities. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly in this one. It's about tools or looks or coolness. Uh, can you hold on? Uh, yeah, I actually totally agree with Christopher. Here. Is So I was just showing you before. These are the individual skills. So this is the Shonen kit. They're, at the minute, there's Heika Jodan and Shonen kit, but at the minute, we're revamping them all. So um, <laughs> how is this for just fortuitous? So if I just pick random, understanding how to imply a false lead or direction, number two, skill number 246 in the Shonen kit. They're all numbered. It's all free to download, guys. Go to my website. Just click www.natori.co.uk. 38, John, sorry, I was out by one. .co.uk. Click right Natori Ryu and then click downloads and you'll see free start here. I think it is. And it's got literally just download it. And uh, number two, uh, two, four, seven, move people's attention from far away while you work up close. The next one is understand the story of the master who Anahoy obtains a large pot from the Shonen Ki. Know how to judge the financial income of somebody, which is exactly what we just talked about. So these are just basic skills. And actually, what's amazing about Koryu Special Forces and all that ninjutsu is it's not anything complicated. And in fact, the shinobi, who are clearly the Special Forces of the day, say, do not make it complicated. If you overcomplicated things, it will fail. It's good to be long term and things to be subtle. There's a big difference between subtlety, long term and multi layered versus complex. So it's a very easy set of steps. To get to a point, but there's patience, there's hidden elements, it's plans within plans. But when you imagine it's like a machine, you click, go on the machine, it's click, click, it's all working. Once you put too many things in, like a car, and you've got like electric this, electric that, and sensor this, camera that, and the next thing, it's all going wrong. And like, I broke down the other month and I had to get the um, recovery guys out twice. I was on a five hour car journey, which is across the country in the UK. And it's because Summit broke down. I think there was water spill in the car, which got on a bit of a um, lead and the power steering went and I couldn't use the car. If I had got a car that was 20 years older, I'd have got all the way home. It wouldn't have bothered me. But things that are too complicated break down quickly. So Christopher is absolutely right. Is Whenever you do anything ninjutsu, he says, keep it light, keep it easy. In fact, Isui Sensei says, Isui Sensei, by the way, if you don't know, is the head of Natori, the original guy, the main, the man who, who wrote the Shonen Kim and all of Book of Samurai. Not all of it, actually. But basically, um, he says, don't bother with all the tools. Pick it up as you go along. Use what you need to use. If you've got even a pin on you that's out of context, they'll say, what's that? And that head's coming off. So you need to be able to be strip searched and people say, yeah, he's got nothing incriminating or what, you know, they're not just, they don't just murder people randomly in old Japan. You have to have some sort of like reason for, you know, imprisoning people and they go through their version of trials and everything. So if you look at Mubyoshi Ryu, you can, in Mubyoshi Ryu, you can strip down to your underwear, but inside the underwear, a message is twisted into the cotton and there are metal files put into the teeth like that. That's their ninjutsu. And the point being is if you found that, 
then yeah, they'd be like, you're up to no good. But at least it's that you can't pretty much see it. Because I've tried it and I did it on a newspaper interview and then pulled it out. So his two senses is exactly like that. Basic skills, lots of basic skills, be excellent at basic skills and then make it subtle. Boom, special forces. Uh, how did the samurai shinobi carry or transport drinking water while on a campaign? They actually use um, all of Japan. Is So remember, there's nothing specific for ninja. It's not like um, the ninja use different things, but the Japanese use um, flasks made of bamboo, which have a little stick in, and sometimes they fill them with clay. So you put clay inside, then push another bamboo inside of it, you know, get all the clay water, then it dries, and you've got like a hot water thing. And also, of course, you have flasks, just flasks. So basically, ninjas carried flasks. Um, and one of them, if you look at the Rodan shoe, yeah, it's the Rodan shoe. Um, I'm sure it is. It's got a straw in it. You actually get a straw. And there's actually in Heigu Yoho, which is in book two of Natoru, it actually has flasks in it. But um, you, you're meant to be, you meant to come across streams. You're technically in the wilderness going to come across, in places like Japan, water. You'd never be out of water in England. Unless it's a drought, you're never going to be out of water. And Japan's not too far. And that's what the skill of looking for water plants is. So you've got to get the arrow leaf plants, willows. And once you start seeing those from a distance, so you start, you know water's there. And it says you go to, as you go further into the valley, start turning stones over. And when you see the bottom of the stone is not dry, it's a different colour, it's wet you're close to water, start digging. And then if you dig up, you they put a feather in it. And then if water droplets form on it, you can dig and get water even more. So they're just, they are basic way, military ways. It's not a ninja way. You've got to be careful here. There are not ninja ways to do things. There are very few of them. It's just samurai or Jap. First of all, it's Japanese ways to do them. Then it's um, samurai ways to do them. Then it's ninja ways to do them. And they all fit together. So uh, that's that. Uh, that reminds me, I have to make my banners. Yes, George, you should get more involved. Have you even sent me? I think you have sent me a picture, George. Right. Uh, yes, it's like playing chess. Okay. I, sorry, guys. It's just that I've got um, the, the dead small on there, and I have to leave Lily Ford. Daimaru. Okay. You cannot think of the possibilities and planning calling. It's just not possible. Yeah, yeah. So this is the same as swordsmanship, isn't it? You have to have skills to respond to things it's not about their it isn't it isn't that's a difficult one that so basically you have to prejudge what other people will do natoriyu ninjutsu has two major aspects of this is first of all if you don't know the enemy it's all in the shonen case if you don't know the enemy guess by what you would do if you do know the enemy guess by what they would do but you never know, they might do something totally different. So you have, on, on the main, have to be able to respond with a very good set of skills and proper responses. It's the same as fighting. You don't plan a fight. I'm going to box him in the ear and he's going to move left. And sometimes you will do that for one move. You'll do a feint and you know they're going to move. So you go to punch them on, you know they're going to move left, bang, left side. Or you go to this way and you know they're going to push them that way. It's the same in that bit in Heiko Jordan where Isu Sensei talks about sword fighting. We don't know exactly what he means. I'm trying to have a drink of water, but I keep chatting. We don't know exactly what he means, but he says come from one side constantly and then move over and cut the other one. But we don't know if he means like one, two, three, bang. Or because it's in the dark, whether you're moving around and you're attacking from one side, then you're retreating and attacking from the next side and retreating. And then you crawl around the other way and attack from that way. So we're not quite sure how it is, but the principle is the same. One, two, three, they do something. But that's only one step. You've got one faint chance. You can't go, he'll do this and then he'll do, then he'll do that. That's like chess. There's got to be a, a level where you like can no longer predict what's going to happen. Or because the avenues of the avenues of possibility are so much that it's just random then so it's all right saying he's going to do a b or c but if he's going to do say yeah it's all right saying he's going to do one two three but what if it's up to five thousand options then it's just random there's a point after say 10 possibilities where it's random you know that's just a guess guys by the way uh, okay um yeah so that's a uh, uh dai maru the mindset knowledge and good skill base yeah, okay. Wow. Because <laughs> there's not that many of us on here. We're actually keeping up with stuff. So, right, next question, guys. Next question. 
is it going to make me burp in a bit? I always say I should buy still water for these things, but I don't because I don't like it. I like sparkling water. Um, how common was it for Japanese castle to employ shinobi for defense and scouting? Now, I couldn't tell you, from an academic point of view, I couldn't tell you how common that was. First of all, step one is what year are we talking? If we're talking the times of Masashige, 1300s, then God knows, nobody knows because we can't pinpoint the word shinobi. I, but I will answer your question properly, Bacon. But ba let me give you the, the academic answer first. You don't, first of all, what do we mean by the term shinobi? Shinobi doesn't really appear till 1580s. Do we mean which, we're talking Sengoku J Jedi, we're talking earlier than that. Are we talking Edo period? So there's that to, to take. From an academic standpoint, you would have to, you'd have to qualify all those variables and it's what happens in a paper, they qualify variables. So they say, we know it could be X, Y, Z. And I'm going to tell you why X, Y, Z could be. And you're like, yeah, OK. And we, every every time you read an academic article, you always come back to the same point as they say. But that being said, let's discuss it. So you have to do that. That being said moment, which is proper annoying. So understanding that by Shinobi, we mean secret agents who are used to, of any name, who are used to uh, defend castles. And by what date, let's just say the Sengoku period onwards. Um, we can't qualify it properly, but the amount of people who in the scrolls who definitely talk about it, and what we do know as an almost certain is that, an almost certain, is that Shinobi used to um, guard the Lord on his movement. So when he moved, the Shinobi would guard the Lord. There's loads of evidence for that, and even Mie University are confirming that that's, that's what they do. So we know one of their primary jobs is guarding. So everybody only sees the Shinobi as their imagination of Shinobi, but actually Shinobi guard things. They use weapons, they use guns, and they... Uh, they use, hold on a minute, guys. They use guns. I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna go tits over here, aren't I? and fall on my heart. Right. My fire is dying a death. So I'll have to get up in a minute and put another. Uh, put another. Um, I can feel it's getting cold behind me. Right now, I'm totally lost. So there were guards. So we do, and then you got the band sent you. I talked about guards, and you got like. Chikamatsu talks about guards, and then we know that by the end of the Edo period, they are literally castle guards. So it is absolutely without any real worry that we can say Shinobi in the Sengoku period guarded castles. It appears that their job coming out of the Sengoku period is guarding prisoners, guarding castles, infiltrating, spying. So it's not always just a spy. It's difficult to translate the word Shinobi because you could equally translate the word Shinobi as um gunner you know specialist gunner highly trained gunner if you look at the uh, one of the mie university lectures in english done well it's in japanese but it's got english subtitles by yuji yamada sensei then it clearly shows that they get paid more for being gunners absolutely but they're also guards so they're gunner guards prison holders if you like they keep prisoners they're they're criminal capturers and their secret agents. So how do you translate the word shinobi? I would just call them infiltrators, but actually there's all the connotations behind that. They could equally be called aquabaseers, specialist gunpowder unit and um, infiltration detachment. You know what I mean? You could go down that route with it all. Um, how uh, And scout, sorry, scouting, I missed that bit scouting without a doubt without a doubt but don't forget there are different styles of scouting four technically maybe three so omonomi chumonomi komonomi isui sensei of natoru says there are actually old versions of that they have different versions but by the time that in people in the edo period are writing down all their manuals omonomi komonomi chumonomi which literally sperm is basically saying big middle little you gotta be careful here you get o uh, or die chu and um ko which mean i wish i had the ability someone to type the kanji up but basically big middle small but you also get upper middle and lower level jo chu ge the chus i think are the same but so basically you've got big and upper and small and lower and they're used in different ways sword fighting it uses upper middle and lower not guards, ability, and ninjutsu, 
Bans and Jukai says upper, middle, lower ability. But for scouting, it's like big, medium and small. So we know this is referring to size of scouts and there will size of scouts do different jobs. So 300 men on horseback going into enemy territory with the Lord in the middle is Omonomi. So he's big. Do you know what I mean? Whereas and at the lowest end is Shinobi. They are still classed as scouts. I don't have a definitive quote for that. But if you look at scouting manuals, they, they're always there. But night raiding manual, they're, they're, they're like an add on to scouts. Okie dokie. Right. Have you been anywhere in Japan that you saw 100% evidence of ninja activity? Any trace of the past? And would you recommend all ninja fans to go there and be able to? Okay, right. Ninja style. Do you know what? The biggest disappointment about Japan. Once you've been, I lived in Japan for five and a half years. I've not been there for like three years now because of COVID and because before that it just it wasn't working. I had other stuff to do and finances were low at that, that time, very low. So it was like, do I, you know, keep the house going or do I like go for another jaunt around Japan? Um so I need to, but I've got the cash now. I just waiting for COVID to end and go back. But once you, when you go to Japan, you're like, yeah, this is Japan. This is ace. Little people are speaking Japanese, and the odd person walks past in the kimono, and you sat on the floor and you're eating out of bowls, and you're like, I've dreamed about this since I was a kid. This is amazing. You know, I used to eat with chopsticks at family dinner because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go to Japan, and uh, I wanted to eat. I used to eat bloody Sunday roast with it, and like people are like you can't, you know, you're struggling with it because it's not meant for that. But you know, you're like ten year old. I'm, I'm going to Japan so but then you get there and then after a while you're like once you've learned more about Japanese about six months in you're like I hate the Japanese do my head in the Japanese are not how you imagine they're totally different underneath it all they're like they're it's the safest place in the world to live it's the cleanest place in the world to live you know what I mean it's not actually number one anymore but basically it's bloody safe and it's bloody clean but the Japanese are awkward they are awkward people polite yes awkward double double awkward so it's really difficult and then you sort of realize as a samurai and ninja enthusiast they don't really care about samurai history and they do not care about ninja history in any way shape or form they abuse ninja history uh, to the max to try and get as much money as they can scores out of it in japan cash talks money talks in japan without a shadow of a doubt um that is a single truth there everything's polite and nice but once money's not involved once nobody's paying it's it's not happening um so uh money will open doors in japan without a doubt so what you find when you go to japan is you're like i want to go to a samurai museum there isn't one or the very small i've been the, the national japanese national sword museum now i don't know about you guys in america but i from england i'm used to going to the royal armories and other places now the royal armories in leeds if you've never gone put in leeds royal armories if you're an american and go and look at them it's free to get in it's two massive buildings with a tower and you can walk around it and it's got four floors on armor galore they have jousting outside and i'm not talking the the jousting like you see in like um what was the film with ace ventura in um Oh, cable guy. Not that sort of stuff. Proper like lads in proper armour, a falconeer, they're jousting. You've got people in cavalry going for like, you know, melons and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's really well done. Free. And it's just massive. And that's this side project because the biggest one is actually in London Tower where it's massive. And they've got, you can go all over London and find armour everywhere and all this. You go to Japan, you are struggling. Best place I've ever been for armor was Wakayama Castle. And it's not even from Wakayama. When the castle burnt down, all the armor burnt down inside. They real built it in the 60s out of concrete and um filled it with armor, which was superb. So actually going to Japan is really negative on ninja stuff. And I, you don't find any, there's nothing physical there. Japan burnt down in World War II. There's almost nothing left. People go, oh, the ancient city of Japan and say, this temple, uh, let's take Issei Temple, yeah? Oh, it was built in like 600. No, it wasn't. It was built in the 1980s because they rebuild it every 20 years. And the, it's, the site has been there since the year 600, but so has every other piece of land in the world. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like my garden. That's been there since the medieval times. Of course it has because it's land. So the thing is they've had a working um, temple on that place, but actually 
it's not the same temple you went in there. So you've got to be careful in Japan. There's a real disappointment after you've been there for a while of like, oh, they don't have anything. And when I bring Yoshi here, our Japanese people here, my house is from the uh, 1800s, if not 1700s. And they're like, oh my God, this would be a national treasure in Japan. It would, my house would be a national treasure in Japan. I've been to younger houses in Japan and paid to get in and look around it than my own house. Put it that way. And my house isn't that old. My goal is to have a 1500s house. Right. Okay, so ninja style, there is nothing in Japan about ninja that you can prove beyond ninja scrolls. And of them, there's only the teaching manuals we really have left. It's what we know the ninja there. The ninja appear in lots of documents, but actually it's, it's an echo of the past of ninjutsu, not actually ninjutsu. We only have an echo of it. Remember that all of the scrolls are just an echo of ninjutsu. That's it. It's, there's no archaeological trace for it. Is Koryu Ninjutsu real? Um, uh, Koyo nin, nin, Ryu. Koyo. Which one is Koyo Ryu? Please let me know which one you mean by that. Hold on. I heard it's a combination of eager. Koyo. Explain more on that. No, I'm not massively up on Koryu's names and who's doing what, but please tell me more about Koyo. Did the Japanese make their own gunpowder? Always important. Bloody good question. I assume they made it themselves. Now, the we know that the Mongols brought it in, didn't they? The Mongols brought the gunpowder in because they're like, what are these bombs? Um, whether it was there before, and I'm not sure. Best person to ask on that is Matthew Okuhara. Um, but they must have made it themselves. I doubt they imported it from China. So uh, it'd be way too expensive, I reckon. But they were exporting stuff. And gunpowder is made pretty much all over the world at that point, isn't it? So I will ask Matthew Okuhara, actually. Um, I will ask him. Hold on. Right. Let me show you this. So, let, I go on my Skype. Let's get Matthew. O he won't be a lot. He won't be round at the minute. But, um, right, Matthew. Right, Matthew. I'm on YouTube Live on my Natori channel, and somebody's just asked the question: Did the Japanese? Um, import their gunpowder or make it themselves what was the sort of gunpowder industry for it so um and i will we probably won't get the answer guys back from matthew until tomorrow but it's something i'll look up so there you go that's matthew contacted so that's what that's what chikamatsu says chikamatsu says have friends all over the world that are into this thing and have people that you can contact and this is ninjutsu when i did that what is real ninjutsu video do you remember it I basically said, I send Christmas cards out and that's real ninjutsu because people pay attention to you then afterwards. Okay. So we'll hopefully we'll get that. Um, okay. Yeah, George, basically they're full of it. There's loads, lots of mummies. There's loads of Egyptian stuff. We just robbed it all because it would have been destroyed without us, basically. Everybody says that. The British robbed all the stuff. Yeah, but they were destroying it. And look at the, in the Middle East now where um, people are destroying statues and they're very safe in the british museum yeah check it let me know more about um koyo actually because i'm not sure what koyo is uh i'll be honest with you guys i don't really follow i try i try to do the koryu stuff as in like follow it but actually something extremely obvious comes up when you take about two minutes to actually look at koryu and that is they're gone they're extinct the original koryu are pretty much gone and the new koryu wave came in 1600 late 1500s early 1600s now everybody i've said this to or we discuss it always oh, going yeah, katori shintoryu yes we know katori shintoryu first of all is katori shintoryu actually that old there's a we don't know because the problem is is i'm not saying it's not guys but People need to seriously sit down and go, how old is Katori Shintoryu? I've talked to some people who true and who are experts in Japan. I mean, like generally speak Japanese, sword history experts, the lot, and they're like, it's not that old. It that's its mythological basis. So for example, Natori Ryu says it goes back to ancient China. Okay. It doesn't. You know what I mean? It's pretty much put together in the 1500s. Beyond that, we can can't really call it, you know a real lineage lineages in japan have mythological sections legendary sections and real sections and we know that natori is not it doesn't really we can't pin it beyond 1500 but this is the same for katori shintori 
does it really go back to yay 14 something we have to find where it actually gets to so once you look at ko ryu what is absolutely obvious is that in about 1560 to 1600 a few schools redevelop themselves make all the other schools there's like seven traditional schools i think in ko in in japan that are, give birth to all the ko ryu today with a fair a, f a few of them excuse me with a few of them who have slipped through but if you look at if you go to ko ryu today and you track it all back they end up on a very base few and those base few come from the 15 1600s and they push it on to like that's ko ryu that's amazing actually Natoru is a Koryu in the sense that it isn't connected to any of them. And I've had to bring it back because those Koryu are dead. The Koryu that were actually used in war and not for street combat. Like, you know, a lot of the stuff for street combat, keeping yourself alive in a period of peace. So we get to the end of the wars and everybody uses the, the year 1600 to be the end of the war. And it's not. The end of the wars are actually Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And there's almost peace in the land. Enough peace in the land that he sends everyone across to Korea. If there wasn't peace in the land and they were still upset, you wouldn't send all your forces to another country on a whim. You'd keep them around you because it was dangerous. But he pretty much secured it. So by about 1590, we start to see there's peace. And yes, it kicks off in war again. But, there, you know, for like five or six years, people are not doing much. And we start to start to see that actually sword schools start to become more about zen they start to become more about self-defense and all of that sort of stuff so actually um like natoriu fades off and dies by the time of 1800 we know by 1868 it is closing its doors because it's pretty much useless so all those useless schools because they teach esoteric directions or like how to make sword wound medicine you know but medical by when the uh, europeans arrived european medicine outdid japanese medicine, so they shut it down and all that so when it comes to ko ryu i do struggle with that you could do so much research on it and actually find out that most of ko ryu goes back to here but what we are interested in us guys is 1550 and before so where are the ko ryu from 1550 before beyond the very little thread of like katori shinsu ryu you imagine let's take takeda shingen yeah takeda shingen's forces natori ryu was in takeda shingen's forces and they are there of this is before the conglomeration of all the samurai into urban areas so when the samurai come together into urban areas later in the late 1500s early 1600s they start to mix together. Before that, they're in the hills, yeah? So Natori Yu is in Natori Village, in Natori City, which is Natori City today, but it's Natori Village, and they're looking after, they've got farmers looking after them. Natori Yu may, Natori family, sorry, Natori K, may actually be a, a, an offshoot branch of the Takeda branch itself. They may actually be blood relative to Takeda Shingen, and he brings them in. Now, we, you know, this is one of the things I've got to follow. Their actual diet, they use the Takeda diamond and they're sort of like their name means sort of like master of an art or something like that. But it, it's it's a name, probably an offshoot branch of the Takeda clan. So what we find here is that you've got under Takeda thousands of samurai who live in little hamlets. Now, they're not in these schools doing koryu together. They're doing their own koryu. So name, go through the, I've got the documents of when the Natori clan signed from Takeda over to um, Tokugawa. Nobody else in the world has, has tracked this down but me. And it's got the three names of the Natori members who were in the Takeda forces. When Takeda Katsuyori was crushed, they signed over to Tokugawa and we've got their names there. And basically all of those, sorry, I'm rambling on a bit, but I've got to try and set it up. So all of those people in the Takeda are not doing the same school. They are not coming together every week to have a dojo practice. They live miles and miles apart, sometimes hundred miles apart, and they come together for war. Now they don't train in the same school. Later, they try to make this um, Koshu Ryu, which I totally disagree with. Koshu Ryu is a record of the tactics used by Takeda and his supporters after the fact. 
it isn't you woke up as a Takeda retainer in 16, uh, sorry, 1565, say, and said, you know what? I'm going to study Koshu Ryu today because I'm a Koshu Ryu master. Didn't happen. You studied Nato Ryu, you studied what, all the other different samurai schools. And then you came together under Takeda Shingen. They all debated and discussed which was the best school thing to use. They went and did it. And then later, when all of those people are gone and dead, uh, someone puts together what they remember from the old times and they create um, Koshu Ryu, the, the skills of Takeda. So people keep saying, oh, Nato Ryu is a Koshu Ryu thing. No, it's not. That 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 is not how the Koshu Ryu is built like that. Anyway, so hopefully that will explain my Koryu thing, guys. Sorry, it's a bit of a random thing of that. That's why when I say I'm not that up on Koryu is because actually it makes no, there's no positive reason for learning the history of all the Koryus if you want to know about Sengoku period wars, because most of them are sort of street combat schools who derive from a very select amount of schools who then go out challenging people in peace times and take over the other schools and everybody joins the popular schools. Why? Because they all come living together in towns. Totally different set of things. Um, right. Yes, it is Koyo Ninjutsu in a book written by Yuji Yamada. It's said to be a contributor. Right. Okay. No, I don't. Uh, no, I've never heard of it. No. Um, no, I don't know that one. I'll have to have a look at it. I've got all of Yuji Yamada's books, but was it one in English? But I'm not sure of it, no. Um, so you'd have to get me the quote. That would be quite interesting, but I, have to, I assume that's it. So more than likely what it will be, I've lost my water, was somebody will have created, as I've just said, so this Koyo Ryu, somebody will have created a sub-school based on old teachings. Like the word Iga and Koku Ryu itself is not, is not really how it used to be. It wouldn't be a Sengoku period Iga Ryu because it just wouldn't be. They're different families. Like you'd have Fuji Bayashi Ryu, or if he named his school summit, they wouldn't like Natori is called Natori. It's only called Shinkusunoki Ryu because it was renamed, but it's actually Natori Ryu. So um, if it is, it's literally one person will have started a new school and called it Koyo Ryu and written down some Iga and Koku stuff and then put it together. So, yes, I will follow up on that. Thank you very much. I will follow up on that and see if I can find any scrolls on Koyo Ryu memorised. Um, as soon as I see, yeah, the, the shuriken, the problem with uh, that Yuji Yamada has is he's actually clearly um, sort of like put in a difficult situation. Yuji Yamada is an excellent man. I've been for dinner with him. I've been for drinks with him. I think he's a wonderful human. He's one of the best ones in there. And it's because he doesn't really... Ninjutsu is not his passion. His passion is folklore, and he was got the job of doing this, and now he's become like famous for ninja. But that that wasn't his passion. His passion was something different. But um, as far as I'm aware of the story, he does folklore and magic and all that, and ninjas do folklore and magic. So he got the job. Do you know what I mean? It's like there you go, do that job. So, uh, but actually, he landed a really lucky role because now everyone in the world of ninjutsu knows who he is, and he's a like semi-famous academic from Japan now. Um, Koyo, Koyu Ryu, sorry. Koyo and Koyu probably changed after the American Occupation War Two finished and after major restoration. Yeah, okay. Um, Lord Verena, looking well, mate. Thank you very much. Did you get my email? No, I don't. I always reply to emails, but you said you sent me an email and there's nothing come through. I checked my spam and everything. Um, People uh, go on to actually tell me how you're going to help me out with the martial arts stuff. And it better be that you found Tanky Yoho and that actually you have translated Tanky Yoho and you've supplied it for me in PDF in email. Thank you very much. That's how you help me do martial arts. Go on. How can you help me with martial arts? Go on. Let me see. It's three foot in Japan. Matthew must be asleep. Pfft, no energy. Any recommendations for good shinobi movies? Do you have any favourite ones? I've I've said this before. Best is uh, I've got I've got to be careful, guys. I don't keep going around the same questions because people get bored of watching these later. But basically, um, Laura Biden Citizen is the best ninja film ever made. It's nothing to do with ninja. Um, uh, Koyo is Bujin Kan related. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll I'll check it out, guys. Uh, yeah. Introduction by Ninja by Yuji Yamada. I think I'll have a look at it then. Uh, yeah, so uh, best ninja film is clearly um, Laura Biden Citizen or Blood and Bone with um, 
Jay White, is it? I think he's called. Right, guys, let's get back to Natoru, please. This is going too much like other ninja stuff. Can we go back to Natori Ryu? So, because uh, it's now one hour, so I'm going to do 30 minutes more-ish, so let's go Natori Ryu. This is a Natori day, and already we're straying off into sort of like... I don't mind, you know, little avenues, but now we've left Natori Ryu wholeheartedly. And I'm specifically doing it on this channel for that reason. So let's get back to Natori. Any questions on that? Uh, let them come through. Um, <laughs> samurai movies. My Throne of Blood is by far the best because it's uh, it's Shakespeare. Shakespeare's Macbeth done by um, Akira Kurosawa, Kurosawa, Kurosawa Akira. And it's uh, very dark, very gothic, very cool. Superb. And you should see the arrow shot. He gets shot with an arrow and they show you how he did it. In the, if you look on YouTube, it shows how he did it. The arrow shot from Throne of Blood is excellent. And you can he just gets peppered with arrows. And it's like the 1950s, I think, or 60s. So when do you do any seminar meeting practice? Of course, we've had COVID for a year and a half now, so nowhere. But yes, we do do seminars. The amount of times people have said they're going to get me over to America and it just doesn't happen. I've been once and nobody turned up for uh, from anybody. I, I did a seminar to a lot of people, but it was a lot of people who were already in a club. It was a club of like 30 or 40 people. So I did went all the way to America, did this seminar, and none of them really knew much about Natarumi. And all the people who said they were going to turn up, only like five or six, no, 10, say, turned up. Actually, about 10, I think we had, turned up from all of America. So it was a bit of a, we're not there yet. But I would like to do lots more seminars i want to get them done but the problem with seminars is people want fighting when i get together people want to know about fight it's all about fighting they never really that's why and it isn't an english thing it's not a western thing the japanese exactly why do you think koryu only seems to be about sword fighting you very rarely see spears you mainly see swords because swords are cool. You walk around like a gangster with one on. And all the way from the 1600s, just sword fighting became the coolest thing and all the old stuff. I actually have a quote that says, in Natoryu, and it says, Isu Sensei retired to the village of Ono. And his grandson, Chozaemon, actually um, went back to teach at the castle and his lectures were not well received. They didn't like him. They thought they were old fashioned and out of date. And that was only 100 years after the Sengoku period. So that within 100 years, they considered samurai um, military ways boring. The samurai considered samurai military ways boring. Why is it that we only really encode you? They always are talking about swordsmanship. So when we go together and do seminars, I'm there like, you know, and this troop goes here and we go there. And John's been with me a million times. And as you can see people like sort of shutting off. And I'm genuinely quite good as an entertainer. So I keep them entertained. But um, basically, you, sorry, my neck. So basically, you've got like this problem of people want to fight. And then I've done it. I've done all full on seminars on art of war, on kanji. I've, I've, I've spent weeks building this seminar up when did it for free and then the minute i stopped any questions they went oh no no thank you very much and they all started so swordsmanship and they all start clanging swords and you're like i've literally just told you the secrets of samurai you know like military war machine and all they want to do is flash a blade about and like, i remember my friend looking at me going oh no you know like all that effort and nothing um okay what are your favorite outdoor skills you learn from samurai scrolls Mm, favorite outdoor skills from samurai scrolls actually not from samurai scrolls actually but from that thing is the yin yang thing i just did the new book yin yang and now i've studied it's called inyo in japanese and now i've studied that observing yin yang in the in like you know where the shadows move and this there so when you look at like ambushes ambushes are always in yin positions because they're dark they're over leafy they're not bright and open so you've got to look across the hill as a as a as an observer, a military observer, and you get to the top of a vantage point and you look across and you see a yin crevice 
a yang peak the, the like the way the mountain shape you like and, I, and now i say you can't take troops up that side of the mountain because you have to come up this this slope of the mountain that's a dark crevice and no matter where the sun will go it's a yin position and that is where you need to send your shinobi and suddenly the landscape becomes much more complicated and you're like how would i move a shinobi you know how would i move an army across this and i've got to be careful that has totally opened up the way I view the world from Samurai Scrolls, really. So for all the way from Yin Yang through Monomi scouting skills and then to Shinobi, like Shinobi go in and say, well, actually, this is a, an area of land. I measure it out and then measure that way. And I know that I can fit every one and a half meters, like two meters of Tsubo fits a... Um, a mounted warrior with four or five attendants. So you have to map them out. But you try doing a seminar on mathematics and mapping out and everybody is bored. But when you're in the mountains and you're doing anything and if, if it's raining, they'll, that's a flood and it'll flood and all the people. And it's suddenly, it's amazing. And I watched once Andrew Thoburn. I came back from, I saw Andrew Thoburn, my number one guy, basically. And he had done all that maths. He'd done it all. And you should have seen him going bang, 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 and working stuff out, calculating his head. And it was the first time I ever saw anyone in the Western world, in all of Koryu, of all schools, actually look like a samurai. Andrew's a hard man anyway. He'd knock you out. He'd just give you a good crack, right, if he's not happy. He's a hard man. He's an ex-bouncer, an ex, like, you know, looked after a lot of pubs in the northeast of England. He's not soft. And then... He's in his gear with his knife in his belt. And the next thing he's like, D -d 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 that, that, there, 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 this many troops, that many troops, that, but you go there, right? Move the flags there. And suddenly you were looking at a real samurai. And that was because of Nato Ryu. That uh, samurai, beforehand, he's an hard lad and he does swordsmanship and kendo. And it, but it, it just looks like a modern person doing swordsmanship and kendo. After he got to grips with this, looks like a samurai. That's why I love Nato Ryu, because you like, the sword fighting's all very well and good, but you're missing that deep element of all. So when I looked at when I looked at sort of samurai enthusiasts, and again, this is not an insult to anyone. I think it's it was just some that was missing. I, what I was in the Buji Khan, I'm doing all this, Ichimonji and all that malarkey, and I'm watching other Koryus because I was in Japan and I was going to all the different um the ayase budokan and i think it's not budokan or what's the other one in ayase called anyway where you go there and they're all doing it it was just something missing i was like something is missing as much as these guys are cool they look cool their skills are cool that can't be everything it's missing and then from here the swordsmanship chang clang 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 jujitsu yes that's very good but how often are you going to use that is it really samurai stuff and then all the way to esoteric kuji you're like there was just this big chunk missing there's stuff here which was wonderful there's stuff here that's wonderful but when you there's a gap that's a million paid a million words removed and that's exactly what natori is natori is not the only one in the world japan was full of natori use in the sense that it was full of schools that had all this stuff in but it was only me who's gone and said Let's put this back. So now swordsmanship, which is cool as that end, these text that end, and we're filling it in book by book. And you're like, now it makes sense. Now I get it. And Andrew's suddenly like, bang, bang, bang. And people are like, Jay Kane comes in as my gun by share and all that. And everything's, uh, you know, esoteric tactician. You've got people adding a shinobi. And all of a sudden, instead of the same 20 people lined up with the same stuff on doing the same thing, now it makes sense. It totally makes sense how samurai worked. Now I get it. So that's what Natori did. Let me just catch up. Uh, hold on. The email is about helping you with a challenge you issued a few weeks ago. I work as a high school interpreter. To help you. I'm sure I, I emailed you back. Checked your spam. I did. I, I checked you. I said I'm more than happy to do it. I... I'll let me come back to that. Let me just answer these. But yes, I I answered that email. Check your spam. Um, do you have any plans on visiting schools or colleges to discuss Natori? No, not really. It's about focus. So as much as, say, I put a video on Natoriu channel and it hits two or 300 people, but it's better to hit two or 300 people than 50 people in a seminar who just leave. You know, these are two or 300 people who come and purposely look at Natoriu. So it's better to do that. YouTube, say I get a 1,000 hits on a video. It's better to have a 1,000 people specifically learning about something than 40 in a seminar. It's just, I, don't, I, I just think we're in the world of the internet. It's much, much better. Um, it's much, much better. Um, the Natori Medicine book. Okay. Natori U was famous for medicine. Um, 
that's their main thing. But no, that's not their main thing. That's what they're famous for. Their main thing was military teachings, like literally warfare. But they were famous for medicine. So there's actually in the Takeda army, they used Natori medicine, Natori medicine. And that was I've never found the quote for it. I found that the school teachings, Natori teachings, which we found say like we were in the Takeda forces. We had the Takeda medicine and they and we have I've got the recipe today. I've got the recipe. So but what they said is bit by bit, um, as peace came and all that, what happened was is that medicine was taken off the Natori family and put into the Tokugawa clan of the Kishu Tokugawa clan, but it was still called the Natori medicine. So if you actually look at the, um, I think it's the Boshin War section, Natori Ryu is right there. So when people say, you know, like, obviously Natori Ryu, we've got all the skulls, we've got the graves and everything, but I can pinpoint it to the, to the register of the Boshin War troop lineages you know troop records and it's got natori medicine so you know and it's right there and we know that they went to war as um what's it called um advisors but the medicine is there so it's one scroll it's uh it actually has natori in the title so that's how we know natori is the name that they use for that and uh it's a single scroll but it's medieval medicine it's probably i haven't got it fully translated i've got bits translated but it's the same as banson shukai powder a cat get a frog on the 17th day of the fourth month when it's licked your left toe and you know all that sort of stuff which modern medicine is well beyond that so it's not going to do i'm going to test this sword medicine though though when i get the sword medicine made i'm going to make two cuts in my hand and i'm going to put um sword medicine on one and leave the other one just open and fester it and see how uh see how well they and i'll film it over time and see if it actually works but we need to obviously get i've got somebody in japan looking at that scroll but as i say i've not been to japan in three years so i need to catch up with a lot of people um Andrew's teaching is very good. Yeah, Johnny is. He's, Andrew is can be difficult at times. He's a really good man. He's, he'll always stand by you, but he can be difficult to work with. And obviously he knows this and I know that. And he hates Christmas. He's one of those, he hates Christmas. But if he could, if for some reason you could put in, um, in a plug in his head and taught him medieval Japanese, he'd survive on a Japanese battlefield. And not only that, he'd be a captain of men. He'd be like a sergeant on a Japanese battlefield and he's like that and that's what he's like and it's the biggest compliment I give him as much as he does my head in he's my second in command I've given him the title of Jodai he's awkward as hell I have to always argue with him he's blue and I hope somebody sends in this video because yes Andrew I know you'll be watching it but he's a hard man he backs you up he does the job and he clearly would survive on a Japanese battlefield if he could speak the language he is what you could consider I'm going to say samurai, but what probably more like the Ronin figure, if you know what I mean, where he's, if you watch the Robin Hood film, he's not the knight at this end. You, know, you get the knights next to the king and everything. They're hard men, but they're like clearly, you know, when you get Robin Hood's men who are like warriors on the battlefield in like medieval period in like, you know, the Crusades, as they say. Andrew's one of them. And, he, and he, if you could put, if you take that figure as a Japanese figure, that's who Andrew is. Right. Um, okay. So last year, oh yeah, right. I did get your email, but I sent it you back. I sent it you back, uh, and I've actually bought one of those books. Actually, I think um, I also train and practice in Asian Review. I love your books. Yeah, no, no, Lord uh, Veranus. I don't know who that is, but basically, yes, I've answered this email. I think I did. Um, so check your spam and everything. And so I'll send me another email again. Yes. Basically, this challenge I've given out is the simple fact that I'm just getting on a bit. I'm getting old. I'm living in my house and years are rolling on. And I genuinely want to get involved in swordsmanship. It's nothing to do with Natori Ryu. But um, I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to have a... Why not? I've got no name to lose. I've got no training beyond Bujinkan. And I'm just going to go have a fight with some people. I don't mind. Whatever. Let's just have a scrap. It's all in a bit of fun. It's just like going fencing a day's fencing. So if somebody said to me, try fencing, Anthony, and I have tried fencing. Okay, let's try fencing. Try kendo, Anthony. Try kendo. But I want to do it, Japanese martial arts. And because I am not trained, but I know that there's problems with Koryu, I want to then bring my, my Musashi information there. The problem I've got is I can't train. So if I could spend six months training in it with someone and then go and fight everyone, I could go on the sort of scene and say, right, I've done six months hard training. I've done zero. When it comes to my first fight, 
zero training. Now, I get a lot of the HEMA guys saying, oh, I'll fight and all that. I'll fight them, no problem. But the HEMA guys, I can't. I'll film it. I'll put it up. But they can't be part of this. It's Koryu people. I need people to say, I am a fifth Dan in Eshin Ryu, and I'm going to fight you with my style. Let's go. And I'm going to fight them, and then we'll see how it works in real life and how their training works or how it doesn't work. But when I've, when I've got people from HEMA who've come along and say, yeah, I'll fight you. Like, yeah, I know you're good. You do HEMA. My point is, is I'm trying to take HEMA to the Japanese system and HEMA people saying, I'll fight you. I'm like, yes, that's very good. Have a pat on the head. Here's a peanut. Now calm down. And it's like, we're talking about Koryu people who do this. <clears throat> and I'm going to go and fight these people and see what it's like and see if they actually do that in a real fight. So that's it. So yes, uh, I always have the problem. I've uh, basically, my emails seem to go to spam. So just check your spam. I have, I always answer my emails. I've answered every single email ever, unless it's gone to spam, which I found some in spam. I regularly check spam, but some I miss, I think. Um, yeah, basically, George, I need an audience that commander samurai army. And do you know what? They're not there. Unfortunately, guys, the simple truth is I'm an optimistic person. I'm the sort of person that'll go, let's do it. Come on. Because if you fail, so what? If I go and challenge all these people to a fight and I, I want to do 60 fights with 60 different people, not five fights with the same one person. I want to do, I'll fight that person as much as they want. I don't care. But I want to do record one fight. The first fight, whoever loses, that's the record. It goes in the, it goes on YouTube and that's it. And then the next person, and I want to do Masashi's 60 people. That's what I want to do. And, but if I lose 60 times, so what? I'll, hopefully I'll have learned a bit by the end of it. And then I can say, okay, I've faced 60 Koryu guys and I have no training and they've won 100% of the time. Koryu must work. If I win 30 battles out of 60, you can say Koryu sometimes works. Because I've got no training. It's not as if like, you know, you're fighting a better person. I've got zero training when it comes to that. So if I win 50 out of 60 bouts, you know, individual bouts of 60 people. So the first bout of 60 people, I might give 10 bouts to that person, but none of them exist after that. After the first kill, and none of this like tap all you're out. I'm talking like it's got to be a proper strike and it's got to be like that's a killing blow. We go in and keep going. And, you know, then it's like tap out and then it's a case of, right, tea, tea and cake all around, let's have a chat. Then I want to do 60 of them. And if I have defeat, say, say I win 50 times out of 60, Koryu doesn't work. Do you know what I mean? So what we're expecting is that actually 50 out of 60 times I'll be defeated. And I might get lucky, say, five or six times, say 10. Right. Hold on. Um, medicine books, Andrew's teaching, Kenjutsu. Yeah. Did Samurai use axes? Now, if you go to the Shogunate's channel, he just did a video on the axes. I watched it. It was a very good video. So actually, I don't know about throwing axes. But actually, go and watch the Shogunate's video. He released it literally last week. He said, "Do samurai use axes?" And it's there. So his stuff there. He does it all. Um, you need an audience that want battlefield assignment. Yeah. So the so George basically, I actually don't have the right audience. That's the problem. Corey, I, I didn't really. Sorry. So I was saying this optimistic thing. Sorry. I sometimes get sidetracked. So basically, I'm optimistic. Like people will love it. Come on, who's not gonna love it? Because I did all those years ago. I saw the gap up here. They're doing cool stuff. Magic is here. That's the deepest secrets. But so, so these 30 techniques, 30, 35 in Shinkagiryu techniques, I think 35 in the Emaki, which is there. It's over there, actually. I've been studying it. 35 techniques, 37, whatever it is. It's, it's under 40 from the original school. There might be more now in the modern version, but basically. 30 techniques, you do that all your life and then learn some magic. Like, that's boring as hell. Where's the rest of it? That's not samurai warfare. There's more than that. And now with Naturi, we do it. But actually, I thought people will love it and they don't. Because Kori, let's be honest, ninja people want a dress in black. And if you, if you actually break down, nin and this is not an insult, if you break down what Kori and ninja stuff is, it's actually predominantly men. Obviously, he's always got the exception to the rule. It's predominantly men. It's predominantly men who are a little bit older. They are married with children. They go away to a school twice a week where normally the doors are closed. They do something quite nice, quite beautiful, quite cool. And then they chat, do a little bit of esoteric magic. And they start doing this. 
and then they can talk about deeper strategy for a couple of minutes then they go home to their wives it's a boys club and that's not a derogatory thing because i love it too i'm like i remember we used to go it's a secret club for boys and we don't tell them our secrets and they don't tell us our secrets originally it was secret in the samurai because you get your head cut off and you don't want to get your head cut off but now it's great for married men or men you know who want something more than just going to the pub to actually go and do so when I come along and say, would you like to do the mathematics of a samurai battlefield? Would you like to do like the flag setup? Not really. I've been at my work all day. So actually, you've either got people who like swordsmanship or people who like the mystery element. Nobody likes the actual bit except for geeks like me. That's why the audience doesn't work for Naturi. That's why we've got 17 people. After 10 years of Naturi, was 17 people. And they're probably not the same 17 people. It's people jumping in and out. So... Right, people just can't seem to let go of the Ninja Turtles crash. No response, dressing in black. Uh, I wonder, Chris, if they will in about... So now, when I first started, I got a lot of 10 and 12-year-olds messaging on, on YouTube when it was there, like, oh, I'm, I'm 14 year olds. I've just started... And they come back to me now and say, I've been following you since I was 14. I'm now 24. And they're totally... They, they, everything's shifted. So in 10 years, it's shifted. So you give it another 10 years, the amount of old people that retire from Bujikan and all that, and the new people coming in will take a different direction. Then another 10 years. So I'm... Let's call it up to 50. Then up to 60, we should have a whole new kettle of fish at 60. But I'll be 60 then. You know what I mean? I'll, basically, I'll have achieved my goal, Chris, when I die or when I get to my old age. I won't enjoy my goal. I won't get to enjoy the fruits of it. There might be a, a live chat with whoever takes over from Natori from me with like 500 people on it. You know what I mean? But and they'll be like, do you remember when Anthony had like 20 people talking about Natorius? Because we're at the beginning where it's always the smallest and when I'm not going to reap the benefits of this, but I'm going to do it because it's right to do. Um, the Shogun posted a video. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, George, yeah. Could you do a video on the dinner plan? Uh, and it's used in an described talk today. Actually, I would love somebody, if anybody's out there, a science person, basically, somebody with a white coat and geeky glasses on, to actually do that for me, because I have looked it up, and there's a bit, it's a bit, like the peppers, it says in Japanese customs, eat pepper, peppercorns, and it will keep you warm. But then it also says it will keep you cold. I'm like, how can it keep you warm and cold? And actually, I looked up, there's an academic article where it changes your body temperature by about a degree, I think. So I don't know whether that's enough. I didn't really go further into it. It was a lot of maths and a lot of science. It was beyond my sort of like capability of reading that sort of academic article article where it starts involving maths um because it's not even basic math I'm like, blah, 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 blah. so i would love somebody to do that that would but yeah and what the great thing about that uh, nadina plant thing is um if that's how it's pronounced is what's amazing is yoshi said when she was a little girl everybody had them near the toilet it must have been an edible thing it's not a natural thing it's everybody had them near their toilets and it was just one of those things that people did so that's an amazing fact that we've got like the reasons for why they're outside toilets if you don't know guys it's in the 12 tools uh juni toki the 12 virtuous tools and it's this plant that you use like for putting heads on or for like stripping as a whip or if you you put it in your mouth to try and help you um focus better and all that sort of stuff so yes i would love a science somebody to do a science thing on that um so that'd be wonderful all right haven't seen that video yeah bacon burger go and see it's a good video actually uh rick ninja hi everyone anthony i am a massive fan of your work and youtube videos can you break down for me the bullet point dummies guide to how to get into nato are you training and the best source to start with okay now it really actually annoys me, not you guys annoy me, but it annoys me that I must have said this a million times or got it on my, it's on my website, but it seems like nobody really knows how to do it. So you go to my website, www.natori.co.uk, click Natori, and it's all there. Everything's there. But on in a nutshell, at the minute, you've got to be on Facebook because Facebook, you type in Natori Ryu Hub. So Natori Ryu and then H-U-B, hub, like a hub of a wheel. And you ask for a man called Andrew Throburn. He will give you a you you pay for a number, and then you get put on the drop or uh, get on the newsletter. And from there, you can do courses. And we have some amazing courses. Andrew runs all the courses, so the, there is no reason why you can't you guys can't get involved. We run instructor courses, or, and and I say like you're only. Uh, the thing about being an instructor is you're only as good as the organisation. So we try to keep a high level you know where we are we're not the original natori we are not a ryu brie brought out with the permission of the family so according to japanese custom we've got the family's permission they are the soke of the family if you know what i mean they are the sort of like the head of the family they have given us permission to bring it back out which is i asked permission first before we really pushed it forward that's all there so it's as best as we're ever going to get it 
so please go along get yourself a number you'll see people popping up with the numbers i discussed this before so we've got george who's number 20 here john who's 38 the numbers are popping up and then you can start on your courses and all you do is you add your little bits in we get together on seminars and we have a right good time so so do join us in the training but your main thing is get to natori Ryu hub and do it um uh, what you're doing is working, just not reaching enough out of this. I know, basically. So I think it's time, Christopher. I think time will get us there. Um, I do hope that in the end, I'm remembered as that man who broke it all and who rebuilt it. I might not. Ooh, I might be an old man when I, I'll be sat there at about 80. I'm going to retire at 80. I mean, genuinely, on my 80th birthday, I've never done another day's work in my life. And that's it. It's done. And I will go to my, hopefully, I'll have a purpose-built Natoru Dojo. I would love to be living in Japan. And people will come out and visit, and we'll do all that. And I'm going to just build model airplanes and build model boats and relax and go, you know, fishing on the bank or whatever. And somebody else can take Natoru on. And I'll just sit there and watch what I have created and like some other old Japanese gents will talk about maybe cream the cash when I'm in my retirement, who knows, but I do not cream the cash now, I'll tell you that much. I genuinely like struggle. Um, okay, right, you are, yeah, I don't want, I know it's annoying, but you should post your website, post your website, Facebook group. Yeah, but it's just, it doesn't make a difference because I say it there. It's like if people want to join it, so put it this way, probably it's right it's really a ball ache for me to go and go back through my week's videos and start getting the links and put them all in. And it might help one or two people. And yes, it would be better, Christopher, but I'm a busy man. I've got lots to do. I've got no help. I need people to do things for me. If people did it for me, I would pin the post. But, you know, and they just say, Anthony, I've gone for you. I'd pin the post. But basically, if a student can't even be bothered to go to the top of a browser and type in, www.natori.co.uk click and read and do what it says then they're probably not going to be the best student in the world it's a bit of a cop-out answer i know but if they need a link to find the school I, when i went to train in japan with hatsumi i paid to this is before like the internet was big it was 2005 you got the internet at university at colleges and things like that in your house it was there but it was on that dial-up crap and all that so I went and paid to get things translated. I went and got like all the information I could, created a map, flew to Japan, got a job in Japan and all that to go and train. And that's the level I went to. So if somebody can't type in www.natori.co.uk, then probably not the best student. Do you know what I mean? So as much as I might get a few more clicks, you're just going to get the same people who get a number and don't do anything. I'd actually prefer if people didn't get a number because they get people get a number and like, get yeah, a journey never hear from them again they get the newsletter and some of them don't read it and they just don't go so we could say we have 250 people in that room. we don't we probably have about 50 20 to 30 solid students about 50 people interacting with us who are really you know really going for it and then about 100 watching and 100 who came and went yeah i'm gonna and just didn't do anything and that is not an impact people like people say oh don't give you numbers i'm not doing i have no impact. i don't care if i have three students i prefer five really dedicated andrew throwburn jay kane students tim oh i can't say his name um he's not allowed to be said in public um timothy dalton uh so basically got like people like him if i had more of them Say 20 of those would be the best school. It would be brilliant. It would be brilliant. Um, okay. Um, what was Samurai Naval Warfare like? Did they have... Yeah, yeah, Samurai. So, so Natori, I should really go, guys, you know. So if there's a few more questions coming, I'll stay a bit longer. But even as I'll cut it short. Um, so the new manual from Natori, whether it's in book three or book four, we don't know yet. But it's fully translated, all ready to be published. But we need two manuals for a published work and now what i can't do is put a manual from yoshi and a manual from miyako together that makes it really awkward with the royalties and who gets what and it's all like and the translation copyrights gets complicated so i need two scrolls from yoshi or two scrolls from miyako and at the minute i only have one from me so we, we're racing on the next one so the next one is suisen oh, so suisen yoho is done ready it's got maybe about two weeks work left on it but it's done without doubt they had naval tactics it's amazing so um one of my favorite ones so you have a blockade system for when you go into port at night you pull into port and you blockade in a certain way shinobi have shinobi boats i actually found a 
ninja boat manual in japan years ago which i have in my collection nobody knows about i've not shown it anyway it's like basically making stealth boats so we know we have shinobi bume which are shinobi boats and they go out and totally like in between everything you have um arrow formation circle this is ships in circle formations you have um sh uh doppelganger boats where you put like the main leader on this boat with his flags, but actually is on a different boat. And you get like interceptor units. You get X. We've got like X formations in Natoru where this wing breaks off and that wing break off and you've got to pull back round. And then of course you get like divers of the watch who have like um, chisels and they go in this and they get in the strakes. The side of a boat is called strakes and you start pulling them down and the water starts going in. Oh, it's just mustard. And then you get how I in that area, it even tells you how to pull someone overboard, where to stand on your ship and how to drag them overboard without you going in or without them being able to stop you doing it. There's different techniques for that. Unless obviously they're physically strong. Like, there's like four of them pulling you. There's a specific way you use a tool to get them in the water without you going in. And they, so they find it extremely difficult to not go in. So you then got fire. You're throwing fireballs in it. Um, we have different um, river crossing tactics and all the different archery. One of my favorite ones in Natoru is the fully lacquered. You know, you use me bows now. Not like that. Fully lacquered, fully lacquered string, lacquered um, arrows. And you're going through under the water and you're coming out and you're shooting people. And you, we talk about the way of making um, targets with your body in the water and where you can and can how to cross water with staffs. There's all of that is coming in Suicide and Yoho. It's mint. Okay. Um, right. Right. So, okay. What was the sound? Okay. Did the Natori school scrolls make any mention of strength and condition training methods for fitness? Actually, he does talk. There's an entire article on strength. John, I don't know if you're still there, but you got the page in book one that the articles of strength start. So basically it says very simply, don't fight anyone stronger. I love this. Everybody's got this sort of like samurai idea that like the samurai can get like throw people like, you know, Aikido, the biggest men gets thrown. He soon senses, like, don't fight anyone bigger than you because they'll just grapple you and pull you. Like, if you're bigger and stronger than you, you're going to get done. So, and this is obviously plays out in um, sports. Men are bigger than women. So when women compete in men's sports, 99.999% of the time. I know you always get those ones that they put them on. Women beats man, but 99.999% of the time in all fights, a man will be a woman unless the size proportion is over 20% because men are 20% stronger. So you'd have to have a woman who's 30% bigger than a man to sort of start gripping him. And the same is for men. If you're bigger and stronger, you're bigger and stronger. And that's why we have weight categories. Even the top professionals of today have weight categories. And, you know, in, even in MMA, you get heavyweight people, you get this weight. And Isui Sensei, who's living hundreds of years ago, said, don't bother. It's like throwing fire at water, he says. If I remember rightly, he says, it's like having water coming at you and you throw fire at it, hoping that you win. It ain't going to win. So basically, he says, shoot them. <laughs> so basically he said if somebody just kill him take a knife to him don't bother wrestling don't bother getting strong he said you hear all these people get strong and massive nobody's skin is strong enough to get rid of a knife blade so he's like just dead and he says if anybody's got a preferred weapon shoot them if these people come at you like he's the expert of shinkagiri i love this is what i love about natoru so natoru like you're gonna face the expert of shinkagiri bang yeah, yeah, not really. It's Indiana Jones. Natori was the Indiana Jones of Koryu. Just shoot them. And he says, if somebody's got a preferred weapon like a sword, fight them with a pole arm. Don't get anywhere near them. If they bloody got a sword, why on earth would you fight them on equal terms? The entire point of real Koryu, I don't mean that derogatory to the Koryu guys. What I mean is real battle Koryu is this idea of Kyojitsu is the strong and the weak, the in the um, insubstantial to substantial. You have got to find the weakness of the enemy and manipulate it so don't sit there doing a load of strength pull-ups sit there learn how to knife people and where do you knife them how do you do santo isho santo isho i think uh, three strikes one position so learn where the strike points are with a knife one two three in the neck one two three in the guts done that's what natura is about the other one natura is kill squads if somebody's big and thingy 
have a kill squad and go and kill him. Don't mess about with anything. That's what I love about Natori. There's no bollocks in it. It's like just murder everyone. And like when he says, Natori says, when a group are coming towards you and it's clearly obvious they're not going to give you a present, they're like coming to get you. He's like, oh, excuse me, mate, have you got a cigarette? It's just draw your sword and murder the first one. So imagine if I'm walking down the street. As a samurai, I've got this um, right to defend myself at that level. But in English law now, you have to show that they were, you know, really actually going to hurt you and physically kill you. But in samurai times, somebody comes up to you in the night, like clearly, which you shouldn't be doing. It just says murder everyone. Murder the first one and everybody starts running. So when that group are coming in, Isui Sensei runs in, with a, takes his blade out and just kills the first one before they even said anything. And everybody else is in disarray. And he just starts going after them, cutting them down. That... And Yoshie says, when she was translating, she went, you know what, Anthony? You can tell when his Suicide Sensei has not done something because he's like, he talks like it's academic work. He's like, how about this? Or maybe this? Or we've thought about this. He says, but you can tell when he's done it. And she says, he totally sounds like he just murdered a group of people who've come up to him multiple times probably just like, just kill them all. So which is like, brilliant. Okay, where are we up to? Um, so that's fitness. I never, wow. Yeah, bacon. It's the naval warfare is awesome. It's really good. And there's lots of esoteric stuff as well, yin-yang stuff, and it's really cool. But it's technical. To be honest, like all of Natori stuff, I think people find it a bit boring because they're like, uh, actually, that's really technical. It's amazingly interesting, but it's boring in the sense that it's too difficult. It's not like do A and B. So there's all these technical terms. Like there's probably about going to be about 30 pages on boat building, which about, nobody's going to read. Um Okay, if you have any questions, get them in now so I can wrap this up. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I will get you, Chris, to do the next, if you want to do the next one. Um, uh, okay, Mubio Shiryu Auctions. Uh, I've seen it was sold, but is it still on? Is it still up for sale? If it is, I'll go and check it out because uh, I'll check the auctions because Mubio Shiryu is, I think that's Miyako's little baby. Nataru is mine, but she loves Mubio Shiryu. I think, I think Miyako is um, Hagiwara Juzo, um, Hagihara Juzo reincarnated. If reincarnation exists, Miyako is Hagihara Juzo. Everything about Mubio Shiryu revolves around Miyako. Whenever I find something new, it's Miyako is with me. Whenever something new pops up, Miyako is there. She is literally, if you follow Japanese tradition and the ghosts are out there of the ancestors, Hagihara Juzo is following Miyako around and she, he's going, there you go, there you go. She keeps getting Mubio Shiryu stuff. Thank you very much, George. So, yeah, I didn't know whether John was there, George, but I didn't know whether you had your book with you. I know John's usually got his book. So, yes, page 145, Articles of Strength. So if you've got book one, uh, yeah, yeah, there's John, beat me to it. So uh, page 145, that's what he says. He says his entire, like, 10 or 20 page what is on strength. So please read that. Um, yeah, basically pulling an Indiana Jones is like, boom, yeah, you're a great swordsman. Now that's great. Uh, okay. So live streams, guys, summary of just for tonight. For tonight, as I say, Throne of Blood or go for Law Abiding Citizen. Law Abiding Citizen is the best ninja movie you'll ever see. It's or Blood and Bone by Jay White is. Right, guys, I am going to come there. We're over the hour and a half thingy. So uh, if anybody's got anything final, say say it now because I'll click the end stream soon. But thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm going to, I don't want to do the live streams too often. It's Natori Day. I had a full Natori Day. So I did this on this channel because I want to celebrate the Sui Sensei. He was a real samurai. So one of the things that really does annoy me, guys, is that people associate now the Shoninki and Natori with Anthony Cummins. Now, the problem I've had in the past is, as much as I'm actually quite a nice man, I'm not a horrible, I don't, I'm not horrible to anyone. And I find that people should just be nice to each other. So have a cup of tea, have a piece of cake, everybody be happy. But obviously I can understand why people don't like that. So I do know that it's not me. I'm not a horrible man. And I know why people really dislike me. They don't dislike me. Uh, if they put them, if a lot of these people who like hate me, put a mirror up, they'd say, actually, Anthony reflects the fact that I might have made a mistake in my life. And if I focus my hatred on Anthony, it will make me feel better that I don't have to face the fact that the sensei I've just given 30 years of my life to lied to me and took all my money. So actually, because there's no real reason to hate somebody doing a bit of research. I always find this puzzling. Um, I call myself a historical researcher. Sometimes I have to use the word historian, but I have done the degrees, but I prefer historical researcher because it shows I'm, I've got an open mind to go and find some new things. And I always find it weird that somebody could hate a historical researcher so much. And you think, 
maybe if you were deep down true, you'd realize these people that they hate the idea that they've wasted their time. And a lot of what's come out of that is people say, oh, Anthony, it's notorious, Anthony's rubbish, is notorious, Anthony. It's not Anthony's stuff, it's this man's here. So that's um, Natori Sanjuro Masazumi. Died in 1708. He was born in about 17, 1620, 1640, somewhere around there, if you do the maths. That's his death tablet. That's his name was given to him by a Buddhist monk at the time. He's a real samurai. He he gave everything to Tokugawa Yorinobu. Uh, you know, he lectured Tokugawa Yorinobu on military art. Imagine lecturing. We know he did this. He gave lectures personally to Tokugawa Yorinobu about military art. And he's possibly at one point the second most within the top five most important men in all Japan. You know, he's actually the the person who brought about, you know, that he was the second shogunate line and things like that, the different lines of the of the four houses. It's the three houses, but I think there's four in total, if you add them all up. So that is what makes me a bit sad, is when people come on, they like, oh, that's already, that must be rubbish because it's Anthony's stuff. It's not Anthony's stuff. I'm just the only man. It's like, it makes me a bit sad that those people have access now in English, and we all know they bought the books, come on. All these people who hate Anthony was have clearly bought the books. And it's like... They hate that so much instead of engaging with it because it, if they had truly reflected in a mirror and said, yeah, what I've been doing is actually wrong for about four years. <laughs> like she's like, I've been doing it wrong for about 10 years maybe. And I didn't mind. Just turn it around. Okay, right, guys, let's go for it. Um, okay, thank you very much, Anthony. We have live stream next weekend. I say live streams I'll do when I can, but not every weekend, no. I'm going to go back. I'm going to ask Chris if he'll actually email me, Chris, and let's talk about work out how to do a live stream, um, how to be a moderator on a live stream, and I will get you as a moderator on my uh, Anthony Cummings channel. Um, bacon burger. Okay, uh, Sam was just tonight. We're done. Cheers. Okay, day. So invent a sport like HEMA fight, but with 20 people on each side. Yep. <laughs> Brother, can, you imagine the, can you imagine the insurance for that? I probably think it. Um, okay. Good to see you again. Excellent, Kane. Um, that's not Kane 64. Kane 69. Um, no, Kane 64. That Kane, is that Kane 64 or not? And you'll know what I mean, or is that a different Kane? Um, right. Yep. Yep. Massive like thingy, massive fight. And thanks so much for your time, Anthony. I'm not Koryu trained, but if you ever want to use me as a trained dummy, Dorset, you should be in Natoru. Why are you not in Rick Ninja? If you don't get in Natoru, uh, that's terrible, right? Okay, uh, Christopher, do that. Um, just let me give it a minute to see if Kane, yes, Kane 64. There we go, Kane. If you watched the video the other day, I got the dog you gave me out for Natori Day. Kane, you should come back to Natori. So to not embarrass Kane, he actually was in Natori. He's number 64, but he, he left and he was very nice at leaving. And he says, you know, Anthony, no, no, thank you. And all that. And um, ah, Stephen DeVock, just, sorry, just got right. So basically, Kane, you should come back. Things are ironed out a bit. So it's a shame that you went because you're a very nice man. But everywhere there, Kane's been to my house. He's an extremely nice man. He's a lovely guy. He does the best washing up in the world. I've thrown that steel little thing away, Kane, because you won't bloody wash it up. So there you go. Right, okay, cheers, guys. I'll see you very much. I'm going to end stream now. I hate ending the stream because I know we still got questions to go, but it is, like, literally time to go. So it's 20 to 9. Um... Uh, all right, I'm going to answer this one because this is important. Can you do MMA, BJJ, and Natori the same? Absolutely. The entire reason Natori Ryu is designed is because you can do your martial arts and Natori Ryu. If you're in the Bujin Kan, Togakure Ryu Ninjutsu, Budo Taijutsu, you can do that till you are blue in the face. No problem. And you can join Natori Ryu. I've got Togakure people and Nat who are in Natori Ryu. I've got people who are in... Um, Bujin Kan, just general, and do Natori Ryu. I've got people in different schools. You can do it. I would love it if we got some of the fighting people in to do Natori as well. Absolutely. All right, guys, I'll see you later. I'm now going to have a beer. I'm going to have Asahi beer and enjoy my Saturday night in bloody lockdown again. That's like, what, 52 weekends almost in lockdown by myself with the missus only coming every so often. Right, guys, I'll see you later. Uh, have fun. Bye-bye. See you later, everyone.